When we think about knowledge areas from a PEMBOT guide perspective, we, uh, we think about a topic from start to finish. So for example, if it's scope, how do we do scope from start to finish? Or how do we go and build the schedule from start to finish? And so, uh, so in other words, what we're going to see in the process groups is we see processes occurring in the vertical process groups, but we're also going to see the processes going horizontally across a knowledge area. So, uh, so as an example, a particular knowledge area like scope has processes that are in planning for the process group and processes that are monitoring and controlling the process group. So when we think about the knowledge areas, we have 10 knowledge areas. Uh, integration, which basically is blending everything together. Uh, so I commonly tell my students after we cover that, if you feel like if you feel like you ate a fast food meal and you're just not really that hungry, but you remember eating what felt like a whole meal, that's kind of integration. You know, there's a lot of shape, but not a lot of substance with it because the substance comes in everything that follows. You have scope, which defines what the project is supposed to do and not do. You have the schedule, uh, the schedule knowledge area. You have the cost knowledge area, which gives you the overall budget. You have the quality knowledge area, which gives you the, uh, the, the quality system, if you will, quality baseline, things of that nature. You have resource, formerly called human resource in, an, in older PMBOT guides, but resource basically tells us how to deal with personnel and physical resources. You have communications as a knowledge area. You have risk as a knowledge area, which is not just getting rid of the bad stuff, but also making the most of the good stuff. You have procurement, which is where you use contracts to get goods or services from someone else. And then stakeholder, the final knowledge area, which is basically how do I identify and successfully engage stakeholders throughout the project. So as you can see here, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of processes, and if I said, well, let's just talk about all 49 of them, it's going to get kind of muddy pretty quickly. But in a, in another video, we discussed the five process groups: initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and then closing. Uh, monitoring and controlling being one process group, and so uh, so you can look within that silo and say, okay, what all am I doing here? What all am I doing here? Then when we look across a knowledge area like scope, we can see, okay, what all are we doing from a scope perspective across the life of the project, for example. Now, integration has, uh, as an example, seven processes. This is our only knowledge area that spans all five process groups. Uh, scope and schedule both have six processes each and uh, they have processes that are in planning and monitoring and controlling only. Cost has four processes, three in planning, one in monitoring and controlling. Quality has three processes, one in planning, executing, and monitoring and controlling. Resource has six, um, so it has some in planning, some in executing, and then one in monitoring and controlling. Communication has uh, has three, so that is uh, that's one in planning, executing, and monitoring and controlling. Risk has seven. Uh, short of integration, that's our big one, and uh, the majority of those are in planning, five of them, with one in in, uh, in executing, one in monitoring and controlling. Procurement has three: one in planning, executing, and monitoring and controlling, respectively. Remember, procurement is what we do to get goods or services from someone, not what we do to go to work for someone, but what we do to bring somebody in to go to work for us. And then our final knowledge area, stakeholder, we have four processes: one in initiating, planning, executing, and then finally monitoring and controlling. 